Hi everybody, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap and welcome to the Golden Hour Club Scrap Card Kit Workshop. You're going to have a lot of fun constructing a total of 14 beautiful cards this month with this Golden Hour theme. The colors are rich and uh, warm and I think you're really going to love these cards. Alright, so I've got my instructions all printed out here and it's, it's quite a bundle of documentation but it's all designed to just help you achieve uh, your goals with your card making. I have the Golden Hour card kit ready to go plus my 12 inch guillotine style trimmer from Fiskars. We carry these if you don't have one. I can't recommend this enough. And then I also am using our accordion pocket file. This is an organizer that helps us keep track of all the pieces we trim all at once. And we're gonna work them into four separate pockets labeled A, B, C, and D, one for each of the four card sets. Normally we make three sets of cards, but I was able to squeak out two bonus cards into pocket D this month. So this, this collection actually makes 14 cards and you'll find that you also will have the 14 envelopes required for those four different sizes. Nothing worse than having cards with no envelopes, right? <laughs> so I have a series of goodies here, ribbons, some beautiful washi tape. I kind of put my little goodies in a small bag, but I always recommend people keep everything in the large bag the kit comes in until we have a chance to do the assembly. We also have these really fun um, circular sequins, and I have a clever use for those as well we'll talk about soon. Well, let's just go ahead and get started. First, by sorting our paper into the order that we'll be trimming it, and that just kind of helps prevent errors from happening. Normally the first two pieces of paper you'll see on the instructions are the cut aparts, but since we've made some changes this month, um, I'm gonna put those at the end and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so grab all the paper and I like to hold it in the crook of my arm because it's just easier to sort through and find what you're looking for. We're gonna begin by looking for a sheet of this beautiful dark purple. So just find one sheet of that and you'll notice right away it has a stunning linen texture. It's so, so pretty. Probably can't see that on camera, but at home I'm sure you can. Then we're looking for a sheet of dark orange. Now you'll notice right away there's like a yellow and two oranges, so just make sure you grab the darker version of the orange. I'll find the other one so you can compare here. Okay, so this is the, the light orange and this is our dark orange. Just grab one dark orange, then one light orange, one yellow, another purple, and then one of the beautiful prints. I'm going to put that face down. Then next, dark orange, ivory plain, then a yellow and a light orange. I'm going to go in pretty fast. Sorry. <laughs> print. If I'm going too fast, just pause until you find what you're looking for. It does get easier as you get to the end of the stack. Now for cut aparts, I want you to find the cut apart that has all of these skinny strips on the left edge and then one of them that has one little border strip on the right edge. Put those face down in the stack and we'll trim those together at the end. Then take the entire stack and flip it back up. So that purple that we started with is on top, and that will be the first piece we trim. And we need to find our, well, we do not need to find our grain direction. This piece will not be folded, so that doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take a second sheet then of that dark orange. Both pieces are trimmed the same way. We'll trim them at the same time. The trimmer can certainly manage with that. If you don't feel comfortable trimming two sheets at a time, no worries, just repeat the instructions. They are written underneath the sketch. So if you're new, I recommend following along with me or reading what's written rather than looking at the image because that can cause confusion sometimes. I will mention though that every little piece we cut has a letter on it or an X. If it has a letter, it gets filed in the corresponding pocket. If it has an X, it's a scrap that could be used later. Okay, so without further ado, we'll trim the purple and dark orange at 10 and a quarter and six and a quarter. Now let's rotate. Let's cut this larger piece horizontally at nine and four and a half. So the pieces in the base and the other pieces we just trimmed, those should all be the same size going into pocket B. Then there will be a smaller set of rectangles we'll trim horizontally at four and a half. 
this rectangle goes in pocket D. And then you did create some scraps. I'm going to set those aside because I do end up using most of my scraps. Then there's a 4 by 12, which run horizontally in half at 6. And then file these into pocket C. Last, there's a 1 and 3 quarter by 12 inch strip. We'll cut horizontally at 11 and 5 and a half. These strips are placed in pocket A, and you have a little bit of a scrap here. I'll set that aside. Now, if you're new and I'm going way too fast for you, don't worry. Um, there is a little gear setting in the lower right corner of your YouTube screen. And if you click on that, you'll see um, speed options. So you can change the speed to 0.75 or 0.5 even to really slow me down. And once you're, you are practiced at this, you will be able to keep up just fine. With this next sheet in the stack, we have the light orange. We need to make sure we have the grain going the right direction. So you see how the paper droops very easily this way and it's very stiff this way. We want it drooping easily top to bottom. And I'm going to take a second sheet of yellow and do that same check. This is stiff. This is a droopy. That's what we want. So we're going to trim these together. Our first cut is at 11 and 3 quarters. And then 7. Rotate and trim at 10. This is a card base. I'm going to set this aside for scoring and then grab the other 2x7 and trim horizontally at 6. File this in pocket C. And once again, we have a little scrap. Very minuscule, right? Now, this next section, I'll trim horizontally at 10 and a quarter and 6 and 3 quarters. This larger panel goes in C. The smaller one, A. We need to trim this last one horizontally at four and a quarter. And that goes in pocket B. We had some scraps here. This little guy and these long strips. We'll set those aside. We're going to repeat all of that. So take the purple. Check your grain. It dips easily top to bottom. The reason for that is when we fold the card in half, if you fold with a grain, it will be a nice looking fold, not a crumply, ugly fold. <laughs> Here's my grain again with the print. Those go in together and we'll repeat. So 11 and three quarters, make sure you stabilize, especially with two sheets of paper. And then slide to seven. Rotate and cut at 10. We've got two more card bases here. We'll set those aside to be scored. And then we'll trim this horizontally at six. Pocket C. And tiny little scrap. Pick up the next sheet. We'll trim horizontally at ten and a quarter. And six and three quarters. Pocket C and the large ones. And then pocket A on the smaller one. Finally, trim this horizontally at four and a quarter for pocket B. Two more little scraps, and then we should have these long strips. Those are left over. I'm turning now to, after completing these two pieces, flip to page two. With orange, the dark orange, checking the grain will be dipping, this time, left to right. So just make sure, yes, very nice that way. And check the ivory as well for your grain. This is a really nice, heavy, really heavyweight cardstock. I love it. Yep, okay. Dipping left to right, we'll make our first cut at eight and a half. This is the start of some card bases here. Do a rotation, we'll trim at 11. And five and a half. Those were three cuts, and during the process, you made four card bases. Set those aside to be scored, and there should be like a little one by eight and a half. We're going to trim that horizontally. I'll take both pieces at the same time. We'll trim at five. These go in pocket D, and this is a scrap. The next piece, it's a pair, three and a half by 12 right now. We'll cut horizontally at nine. 
What I'm going to have you do now is something a little bit different from the instructions, but because you're with me, I think you can manage it. Let's rotate this nine inch piece so it's vertical and we'll cut at three and a quarter. Then rotate it again so it's horizontal and we'll cut at four and a half. <laughs> we just saved ourselves a little bit, a couple of steps. Now these four panels go in pocket C. This almost square also goes in C. And you do have two scraps. Okay. Now find a yellow grain goes top to bottom. So this is stiff. That dips easily. And if you're wondering how I know that, there's an arrow on this diagram that indicates the dip direction. Okay. So I'll hold this dipping top to bottom, stack those neatly, the yellow and light orange. We will trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. Rotate this piece so it's horizontal and trim at nine. Set this aside to be scored. File this in pocket A. Repeat with the next section. So this is four and a quarter by 12 right now. We'll cut horizontally at nine. Set aside to be scored. Once again, file in pocket A. Grab the next strip this time. This is where we're going to make the base basis for our final uh, bonus cards. We'll trim at 10. Set these aside to be scored. Pocket D. Take the print. Check your grain. Make sure it dips easily top to bottom. Just follow along careful with me. There's some interesting rotations that need to happen. Our first cut will be at um, 8, 8 inches. Okay, then rotate and trim at nine. Rotate again, so now this is vertical, and we're gonna trim on the even numbers. Six, four, and two. So six, four, two. Then all you need to do is gather up the pieces you created that are all the same size, these are two by nine, set those aside to be scored. This rectangle that remains is just the oddball. We'll trim horizontally at seven and three and a half. These two rectangles go in pocket C and we did create yet another little scrap. Finally, this next section will trim horizontally at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters. All of these rectangles are used in B, and I just dropped the one inch scrap on the floor. My back hurts, but I'll pick it up. <laughs> Here you go. There's that scrap. <laughs> I just couldn't leave it there on the floor. Okay, now we're moving on to the cut apart. So now, in the past, if you've been with us for any number of years, you'll recall that we had these little registration marks that help guide us through the cutting process. Since developing that, we have really uh, made this a much neater job, and to have those cut apart, those marks help us trim is great, but then they're still there after you've trimmed them and kind of an eyesore. So I'm trying something different. I hope you like it. Um, we're just always trying to improve upon what we do. So I'm providing you with the specific uh, trimming instructions, but you kind of need to follow our principles, which will be to place the piece into the trimmer with the narrowest strip on the right. And then even when you have to rotate a section, the same rule applies. So if you follow that, you'll be just fine. Plus I have the numbers for you for your trimming measurements. Uh, follow with me. We'll trim at 10 and a quarter and then eight and four. All right, now we're gonna rotate and we're gonna cut these into one and a half inch sections. So that's all listed for you, every number. 10 and a half, nine, seven and a half, six, four and a half, three, one and a half. Fabulous. Now, you're gonna take all of these pieces and put them in pocket B and grab the next strip. Here is the narrowest section that always goes on the right. We'll trim at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. 
all of these that are the same size are placed in pocket B. There's going to be one narrow strip used on card D. Pick up the next strip, we we'll place it in the trimmer. If you want, right side up. This, this is going to all be trimmed to the same size, so we'll go at 9, 6, and 3. Gather and file in pocket A, all of them. Now take the next strip, put good times on the right, and trim at uh, nine and a quarter, six and a half, three and a quarter. All of these are placed in pocket D. Okay, one more cut apart. I am turning to page three. And once again, the art contains the references to the, which pocket each uh, piece is placed in. And the strip will be on the right. Here is the first cut at 11. And seven and three quarters. And four. Rotate. 11. You're gonna repeat this a lot. Eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Gather the sames. <laughs> Pocket A. There's going to be an individual piece you can set aside, use it where you wish. Repeat with the next strip at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. I have these mem numbers memorized. <laughs> Okay, so all of these gathered up in pocket C. The next strip, guess what? Same thing, 11. Eight and a quarter. Five and a half. Two and three quarters. All of these go in pocket C. And let's see, the smaller scrap, you can just put these in D. I think I ended up using them all in D, so let's just go ahead and put those all in there, those little flowery scraps. This too, I can't remember where I used it. I did, but I'll set it aside for now. And I think that's all for the trimming. I'm going to swap this for my score pal. Now, a quick word about scoring. Um, this this score pal comes with a plastic bone folder. I typically use a bone folder, like an actual stationer's bone folder to score, or you may have noticed I've been using a, a style, a ball tip stylus. So we actually got these in. It's a three pack of different uh, ball sizes, and this can be used for embossing with stencils and things. But I like this large ball tip uh, for scoring. It just seems to create a really nice line. So it's up to you, you know, whatever you want to use, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. We have some scoring to do. So I'm going to begin with I'm just going to tackle the stack that we've created in the order that it was created. So this, this, uh, I believe it's a two by nine. We will score horizontally at four and a half. So we're just scoring these in half. Do you need to score? No, you could just fold them because we did trim the paper in cooperation with the grain, but sometimes it just creates just a little bit of a nicer fold. Once scored, all of these are placed in pocket B. Next you have these, I believe they're three and a half by 10. Yes. Score horizontally at five and five. We'll, score, we'll place these in pocket D. Next, we have four of these guys. They measure four and a quarter by nine. This is a little tricky. I'm going to have you score them at six. So do not score these in half or it won't work. My, my little plan. Score at six and score at six. All of these are placed in pocket B. Now we have our typical A2 card bases. These are nice and easy. In fact, so common that there is a little asterisk on the four and a quarter. So we'll score horizontally at four and a quarter. These go in pocket A. Now we have one stack left. These are seven by tens and they get scored horizontally in half at five. If you're new to scoring, it may not go this fast. <laughs> Just pause me as needed. And all of these go in pocket C. 
We have some gorgeous cards to make. We're going to begin with card set A, and I will turn to page three of the instructions. Now, if you're, again, if you're new, um, I show each card front, the way the card is actually constructed, and give you some assembly tips. Everything that you do with these cards is completely optional, especially the embellishing. And then in the small print below each card tells you what sentiment from the cutter parts goes on the inside. So we take care of the outside and the inside for you. To begin, I always start by uh, dealing things out, but maybe first I will fold my card bases in half as neatly as possible. So you never really trust your score line completely. I always make sure those ends are lined up perfectly before you make the final crease. And I usually use my fingertip to make that crease, especially if it's just a score line there. Then, once you've done that, take all the card bases and a bone folder and just give them all an efficient little swipe across. Okay, so for our first card, we'll deal everything out for this set. So we're going to start with an ivory card base, horizontal, two of those, and then two orange, dark orange vertical. Okay, now this is kind of neat. We have a lot of fun layering we get to do. And we'll begin with these strips. So we got a dark orange here, naturally, and then a dark purple going vertically here. Now we have, if you sort your pieces by size, I'll go with the next size down, the largest size. And we'll take this light orange and nest it here. How about a purple? And then a yellow and a print. How about a yellow panel and an orange panel here, light orange that is, and a light orange and then a yellow again. This card is really shaping up with lots of beautiful layers. Okay, then we have one last panels for the front. We've got the each person is given, and then happiness and thank you, thinking of you, caring about you, wishing you peace and strength. So then you've got have a very happy birthday with this one, wishing you a wonderful year here. Those are interchangeable, and then deepest condolences for both of those. What I'll do next is just stack up the three of these four cards and set them aside for now. And we'll just make one of them together. And um, I'll just show you a few tips. Not all of the cards in this set are constructed exactly the same. Um, but I'm going to just show you this first one. We have this gorgeous Van Gogh style washi tape. You can just measure a strip off and tear it. And the backing is removed. So sometimes if you tear it, it just tends to separate a little bit easier at the tear, right? And then you can line your border strip with the tape and wrap the ends around to the back. Let's prepare this panel with the charm that we provided in this kit. And we have a new type of an interesting cord available. And we also have added it um, to the store in tons of different colors. I love it because it has like it just really holds a nice shape. It's similar to our waxed linen. Um, I'm going to thread it through the cool, super flat, mailable sun charm and just trim an end. And then I always keep tape handy and I've noticed that my uh, needle tip glue applicator fits in the back section of the office style tape dispenser. And let's just add our sun to position it temporarily onto this cut apart and then just split the the ends kind of like in a Y shape and tape it to the back. Okay, then take another end of the cord and thread it through the other loop on the charm. Just dispense enough so that it goes all the way around to the back. Grab a piece of tape and adhere to the back of this side. So sometimes when you're looking at how I've assembled the cards, it's basically just studying, okay, when do I need to attach what to what? Like if I attach that panel, then I can't wrap something around the back of it quite yet. So th that's why this has to be done first. Okay, nice. Now I will nest this onto its companion, which is in this case a yellow, and the colors are just all interchanged, which I love. No, no card is alike. 
nest this onto the next one. I'm eyeballing this, but sometimes if you wanted, you could measure. Now we have to figure out how we want this, this last strip attached so you can kind of see that. Maybe if it's just real close to the edge so that when we center this, it looks nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just add my adhesive here. I'll eyeball my placement. I'm leaving just a slight, slight reveal. If you want it to pop dot this, you could. And then I will also eyeball this or not. Maybe I'll just use show you my zero center here. Uh, let's see, two and three quarters on each side. So we have three eighths of an inch from the top and sides. So you don't always know. You have to kind of study it for that first round, and then you know. For this one, it's a three eighth inch reveal. I'm centered left, right, and from the top and bottom. Mm -mm -mm. Now we have this other little guy. Have a very happy birthday. I'm just going to go to my pile of scraps. And just take this orange and add this to the corner of the card just to create a little bit of contrast for the ivory on ivory. Hmm, that looks so nice. Yay! One. One is done. This was my sample. Hmm, looks pretty much exactly the same. Okay, then there's another horizontal. I just did something different. I didn't add the washi tape. You could get plenty plenty of tape to go around. I took a piece of the taffeta ribbon, cut it in half, and taped it to the back without a staple or anything. I just folded it in half and taped it to the back of the cut apart sentiment for the front, assembled it the same way, and then I added yet another scrap to the uh, sentiment on the inside. Now for this one, I did a little bit of a ribbon trick. I've been showing it to you quite a bit, so if you just if you've been hanging with me for quite some time, uh, this is easy. I did describe it in, in quite a bit of detail in the instructions, but basically, if you just take a piece of the orange ribbon, about I thought maybe maybe a five inch length is what I estimated, and then just take a piece of it and then a second piece of the same size. I'm kind of ending up showing you this now, but that's okay. So what you would do is fold this in half and tape the ends to the back on this side of the panel. And then just take the other half and thread it through that loop you made and pull tight. Whoop, <laughs> a slippery little guy. He doesn't want to go there. All right. So now that's folded and then you pull and that creates that really, really nice look. And then you just, again, the other end goes around to the back. I find it it's easiest if you just tape one end and then add the other piece of ribbon and then tape the other end. I did that assembly the same exact way on both cards. And again, you can use scraps. What a difference that makes. It just, you know, it would have been a scrap, but why not just put it on the inside of the card? I didn't do anything with this one, but there's plenty of paper to go around. So if, if you choose, you can certainly add that. Now, what I'm going to do is set aside the cards that I dealt. If you want, you can just assemble these right now. Put me on pause. Come back when you're done. And you can follow the images if you'd like in the instructions. I'm going to put it with my sample and set this aside. And we're going to move on to set B. You'll turn to page four of your instructions and take everything out of the pocket labeled B. And if you would like, at this point, you can just go ahead and take the scored pieces. Make sure the bump of the score goes on the inside of the fold. And that should bring the edge of this flap to the middle of the card or thereabouts. So bump of the score inside of the fold. and burnish the whole stack at once, once on each side. Then you also have these other strips. If you'd like, you may uh, carefully fold those in half as well, again, burying the bump. So when I use my score pal with a print, I typically want the print on the outside of my project. So the print is always face up when the paper is in my score pal. Okay, we'll burnish those in a single little stack. That saves a lot of time. Okay, so now the deal, all right? We'll begin by first dealing out these single layer pieces. So an orange, purple, orange, purple. That's the dark orange. 
Now we have the split flap section. So I'm going to take the yellow, the light orange, the yellow, and the light orange. Each one will receive one of these folded strips. Each one will also receive a panel of that same pattern of paper. Uh, let's see, each one receives a piece of artwork. So let's distribute those. We have the sunset, and we'll do the wheat field, another sunset, and another wheat field. Uh, we have these colored panels. Let's see, on this one, I'm going to do the orange. Then I'm gonna do the print, the purple, and the yellow. Okay, now we have some quotes to deal with. <laughs> This is probably one of my favorites. Late in the evening, far, far away, there is a glow beyond the horizon. And I know deep in my heart, it is your birthday cake. That's the inside of that one. <laughs> and we'll repeat that. So late in the evening goes with it is your birthday cake. Then we have a cloudy day is no match for a sunny disposition with have a happy day. And then this is another great one. Your love is a work of heart. Happy anniversary. I always need a couple of anniversary cards. So this is this is just a lovely one. Now I'm going to stack, do our kind of our tradition now. These three assemble very similarly to the first one. So you'll learn all the tricks with this, this guy. And um, what's important here is that you remember the order of steps. And you can also choose the direction of your print. Like, do you want to have it darker or do you want to have it lighter? Like, Maybe I'll go with this side facing up. So I'm going to take this piece and clip it onto the right edge of this yellow folded piece. So, so the flap that opens should be on the left and this flap is coming from the right. So I'll just center that visually, flip it over, and then I'm going to take some adhesive. I'm just going to get it all in one swoop. Okay, and then center this onto the orange base. That was pretty easy, right? If you forget, if you attach this before attaching this, not good. <laughs> so it gets sandwiched between the two pieces. All right, now we can add some artwork to this. Pretty easy. I'm going to grab the, the sunset panel and then the printed panel and attach, put the adhesive on that all at the same time. You can decide where you want all of this to go. Like this fits here. Or it would also fit on the inner flap, and the same is true for this guy. So I'm going to center him here within that space. That could be flip-flopped, inside, outside, however you want to do it. Now, here we have the late in the evening. Now, this is the front. Before we attach that, we got a couple things I want, I want to do. So I'll take like a two-inch piece of the um, taffeta. So that's really, really lovely. I'm going to fold it in half to make a loop. What that loop tells me is that, you know, you should pick up this up, pick up this tab here and see what's underneath it. So I'll tape that in place. Then I'm going to select one of these uh, round sequins. You can pick either from the orange or the, the gold, your preference. And that has a hanging loop on the sequin. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you will when you have this in person. And I'm going to place that kind of center that here as well and tape that into place too. Nice. Then I will put adhesive on the back of this whole thing and center that onto here. Now I will tell you that initially I was using this mat on the front, but I wanted to bring some color to the inside of these plain ivory panels. So I decided for the rest of my cards to put this on the inside. Um, you'll notice that as you as you go. So just keep in mind that you can put the nesting panel on the inside. It is your birthday cake. <laughs> and then you still have room to write your sentiment in this area here. And then you've got a nice split flap card for your A6 this month. All the remaining cards go together the same way with just a minor variation, which I will show you. Okay, so this is the one we did together. And then the other one, like it with the same quote, instead of just stopping there with, with the addition of the sequin, I added the sun charm in the same way I did in card set A. So you'll be able to replicate that. And again, the inner uh, mat 
is that floral print. Now a cloudy day, same thing. I used the orange sequin with the taffeta, added the purple panel to the inside. And lastly, this one included one of those gold charms with the cord. And then I would have put the yellow panel on the inside, but that was before I realized I could do that. So yellow panel inside, I think would create some nice contrast for this, but it's designer's choice as always. I'll stack this completed sample here and set these aside and we'll move on to set C. You'll need to turn to page five of your instructions and then I'll empty the pocket for these cards. This is what's amazing to me about set C is how many um, just mats we're able to nest together to create a really interesting card. Um, begin by, of course, burying the bump of those score lines so that you have four folded card bases. And looking at my instructions, I'll start out with a yellow vertical, light orange vertical, purple horizontal, and print horizontal. After that, it's kind of a matter of sorting through these panels by size, and they might not be in order in your bin, but um, I think we can figure this out. So I've got a print here for this one, and then a purple. Interchange the colors any way you like. I kind of worked pretty hard at figuring out a way to get every color represented on every card as much as possible. Now, the next size panel down, I'm going to find all those. So we'll start out with this purple and alternate with the dark orange. Another dark orange and another purple. Now we have these narrow strips. Those are going to be next. So a light orange. More colors get incorporated, which I just love. Now the print can make an appearance. The purple and then the yellow. Okay, next size petal, we've got dark orange making an appearance now for the first time, and ivory, ivory, and dark orange. Next, <laughs> even more petals. Looks like we have an ivory, then a print, an orange again maybe, and a print. Okay, now we have our outer sentiments. They should match vertical or horizontal. So here we go. I'm having people over to stare at their phones later if you want to come by. <laughs> I don't need to say anything else about that. I just need you and some sunsets. You radiate kindness and then stand close to people who feel like sunshine. Now these are the gorgeous innies. So let's get together soon thinking of you. Um, this one is missing you. Then we have thank you so much. And for me, that's you. Once again, all of these assemble the same way. So once you master one of them, you've kind of got them all. I think I'm going to do this one to show you a little special trick. This one has a bow on it. But other than that, they're, they all go together pretty much the same. I just want to show you something cool with this. All right. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and nest this large linen purple mat onto my folded card base. Then I think we can safely add our dark orange panel centered. If you would like to use your grid ruler to center that, it's a, it's a great time to do that because you get quite a bit of margin going on here. Then this guy, strip. You can once again use your grid ruler to help make sure it's level with the edge. I'm going to go three-eighths of an inch from the edge, so that's three cubes. So it's not like leaning one way or the other. Now, you have three remaining panels for the front of the card. It would be safe at this point to nest the sentiment onto the print. Then when you attach the printed panel onto the ivory, I want you to make sure that it gets adhered kind of equal margins at top, left, and right. That will give you an area at the bottom with which to decorate however you wish. You could use washi tape, you could use ribbon. In this case, I'm just going to take the plentiful amount of orange satin and just give that a little, little knot here. You could do anything you want. Totally your choice. And I'll just snip those ends with my fabric ribbon scissors. And then we can adhere this. You could do pop dots if you wish. That would be gorgeous. Give it a little oomph. And I kind of wish I'd put that in a little bit, not three-eighths of an inch, 
my friends. So I think I'm gonna, just to balance things out, I'm gonna stick to the right here. That's nice. Okay, now here is something cool that I thought of while I was assembling these cards. So take one of the sequins over to your trimmer. I'll bring my trimmer to the sequin in this case. And all you need to do is place that little guy onto the trimmer so that the hole of the, you can't see it, but the hole of the sequin is on the right side of the blade. And give that a little cut. I'm sure you could do that with scissors as well, but I just wanted to make sure it's nice and straight. So now here I have this sort of funky looking shape and then this was the hole that was removed. Then take your bookbinding glue, which is all in the tip because it's been sitting upside down in my tape dispenser and put the straight edge along the edge of the die cut, or the sentiment, I'm sorry. Ha! Isn't that cool? I love that. I just love that. I don't know. I was like, hmm, this makes me happy. The wet glue gives you an opportunity to scoot things around a little bit in case you don't get it placed correctly the first try. Then when you open this, you can perhaps find a strip I'll cut that at seven inches. I have a nice big card here. Might as well use some of that inner space. And then you can add the missing you. You get still plenty of room to write and you've got a beautiful card here. All right, let's review the, the other three in this set. So this is the horizontal or vertical we made together. And then we have the one that's like it now. And this one, what's different is I incorporated some washi tape and I just made a bow from the ivory taffeta. Did I add anything in here? Oh, I did I did the strip and washi tape on this side. It's just that you have to trim the washi tape to the right length with the I just use a craft knife to trim it because you don't want to wrap this around to the back of the card. Here is another one where I used this area to add yet another one of the gold charms in the same fashion I did before, just with several more wines around. Oh, that's so nice. I added a sequin to the inside sentiment here. And then the quarter inch dark orange scrap. Washi tape added a nice touch there. I love that Van Gogh washi tape. And here I added that little guy from, I guess we put that in pocket D. That was a scrap. Nice. Okay, we'll set these aside and grab everything out of that final pocket. Now, anytime you make two card bases out of a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, I'll show you this. Let's go back uh, here. No, here. So here uh, we have this. This is an eight and a half by 12 shape here. And that leaves you a scrap of three and a half inches. So if you're trimming 12 by 12s into card bases, either way you end up with a three and a half inch scrap off the end. If you trim that horizontally into a three and a half by 10 inch piece, that will give you a vertical uh, opening card base for what we call a four bar envelope, which of course we have included for you. These are like more like a thank you note size. And I kind of like that, that they open this direction or you could do it this way however vertical horizontal one of each doesn't matter in this case we've designed the artwork a little bit more so it's uh, definitely a vertical orientation okay so we have an orange strip to deal out to this one and then an ivory you certainly can add washi tape to this one which I did um, and then it's sort of freestyling so you've got a dark orange panel here, purple here. What about incorporating this or incorporating this if we trimmed off the edges, which I did. Then you have your outer sentiment. I remember being able to get up without side effects. <laughs> we'll put that on the yellow and on the orange here. And then the inner sentiment. Good times, right? Do you remember the days? Good times. You could add these to the inside of the card as well, however you want to do that. Um, let's see, one other little thing I did. I don't even think I need to glue these down. You don't. You know how to put adhesive on things. But when I had this one ready to go, I tucked, I believe it was my last sequin kind of behind there. So it adds just something nice. And I think that the this adds something nice to this one as well. Here are the finished ones with everything adhered. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention before is that I folded a piece of taffeta again, just added it here. What a nice little touch that is. There's your washi tape. Nice. And the inside, no scraps there. It must have been running low. 
this is added here at the bottom. Good times, right? Oh, I had fun. I I just love this set. This is a this is a cool uh, formula. So remember that all of these trimming instructions are interchangeable. In fact, I did it because if you uh, purchased the renewal card kit, you would have done a very very similar cutting map. Yes, I adapted it slightly. I doubled the amount of cut aparts I provided, but um, if you substitute paper from your stash, most of you have one, most of you have a stash, and just say, all right, purple equals this, and dark orange equals that, and you just follow the same instructions, you can create yet another set of cards and perhaps use stamps that you own to uh, finish another batch of 14 beautiful cards. Thank you for joining me for the Golden Hour card kit workshop. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned some things. If you're new and it was difficult, don't be discouraged. I just started doing um, a workout program and I'm doing some like aerobic dance style stuff. And the first week I did it, I was completely overwhelmed and I felt like like an octopus with arthritis or something. But now I'm feeling better and I'm getting the hang of it. And the same will happen for you. If you just hang in there with me, adjust the speed as necessary and take your time. Looking forward to seeing you next month.